Good day to everyone, and I will be talking through what our uh, use case is today. Um, in particular, we're going to be talking through uh, a departing employee who is taking data. So at this time, I'd like to introduce John um, on the next slide. John is uh, a four-year employee of QRST Incorporated, and he was passed up for a promotion. So as a result of that, uh, he took a job at a competitor, and he's not very happy at his current uh, employer. So he is considered a risk for data theft. So today we're going to show how a combination of Code 42 um, and Cortex XOR can identify and help speed response to such data exfiltration events. And to start with, I'm going to give a brief overview of the Code 42 application. All right, you should now be able to see uh, the Code 42 dashboard. And for those who aren't familiar with it, this risk exposure dashboard gives a very high level view of some possible data exfiltration or data movement events that may pose risk to your organization. We can break down uh, events to high risk employees, departing employees, and even remote employees. So Code 42 combines an endpoint agent uh, with SaaS-based data collectors that connect to cloud collaboration platforms such as Google Drive, OneDrive, et cetera. And that allows for visibility into a number of file movement events, uh, regardless of whether they happen on the endpoint or in the cloud. So things like copying files from an endpoint to removal media, uh, browser upload events, or sharing changes on a Google Drive uh, document. One of the key differentiators of Code 42 is that it does not matter where the endpoint is, whether you're in an office or the new work from home reality that almost all of us are living in today, we gather that information and present it to the security team. We also collect information on the different kinds of file categories that documents may be a part of. And that also allows security analysts to focus on the data that is most valuable to the organization. So we have a number of different ways of categorizing users to help identify those users that are most at risk for data exfiltration or putting data unintentionally at risk. So we have what's called the high employee uh, or high risk employee lens, which allows you to identify employees that may have risk factors such as performance concerns or flight risk, or even some of your uh, trusted admins who have elevated access privileges uh, who may intentionally or unintentionally uh, put data at risk. We also um, have a departing employee lens uh, that allows us uh, to track employees who are departing um, and then drill into details about their departments, uh, departure dates, any notes, and then file activities that may uh, represent data that is being moved or at risk. With any of these dashboards, you can drill in and actually uh, view the file events that uh, those ex employees are engaging in. We also have alerts that are generated from uh, events that are placed in these lens or these lenses. Uh, and similar to the to the previous uh, demonstration, we can investigate any of the uh, file events that triggered this alert. Another key differentiator of the Code 42 solution is that we are backing up most of those files. So when there is a file that is moved uh, to a suspicious location, say uploaded by a browser, uh, we can provide the contents of that file to the security team so they can analyze it. Now for today's demo, um, as I mentioned, John is leaving. Uh, he is leaving on um, May 8th, so in two days, and he is leaving for competitor after not getting his desired promotion. And we can see that in the, in the past 30 days, uh, he's had a number of uh, Dropbox events, so files moved to Dropbox, as well as a lot of files moved to removal media or uploaded via a browser. As a result of that activity, he has generated a number of alerts uh, within the Code 42 application. Now those uh, alerts are being ingested by Cortex XOR, and so Promove will now show us how those alerts look in 
Cortex XOR and what kinds of automation are available? Right, so uh, code, the integrating Code 42 instance into the Cortex XOR is pretty fairly straightforward and simple. So as we mentioned, uh, Cortex XOR has several categories of integrations uh, and 400 plus integrations as of now. Uh, Code 42, uh, the keyword can be actually easily searched here. It's part of the endpoint category of security product integrations. So adding an instance of Code 42 is pretty fairly and simple. So you just have to mention the Code 42 console URL as well as credentials and uh, just make certain other selections. Like if you want to fetch incidents or you don't want to fetch incidents, if you want to tag this Code 42 security alert to a certain incident type, uh, as well as make certain other selections like alert severities, uh, first fetch time, uh, fetch per run, as well as some of the other advanced uh, choices as well. And you can actually test this uh, integration instance right here. So there you go, it's success. And the integration itself exposes, as I mentioned, uh, several powerful commands. So we have the ability to retrieve the alert details by alert ID, resolve being a code for it to secure alert from within Cortex XOR automatically, as well as being able to add a user to the depart departing employee lands, uh, as well as removing the user. And most important all, you can actually perform a search uh, into the code 42 instance right from the Cortex XOR platform. So below you see the built-in command line interface that is mentioning. You can actually uh, use the bank command and search for code 42 commands right here. So let's go ahead and run one of the command to see uh, how we can actually perform a search for a specific hash uh, based on the exposure categories of cloud storage and application create. So when you actually go ahead and type this into CLI, there's an action that performs in the playground and playground is a space in XOR which can be actually used as a sandbox to go ahead and try to run certain commands. So there you go, you've got actually all the results, including the event type, file names, file size, file host name, file owner, file category, and so on and so forth. You can also actually go ahead and view complete information in a different table. So uh, this is actually a very powerful capability because uh, there are a lot of uh, threat hunting teams as well as security operation teams who want to perform ad hoc operation. They can actually go ahead and use the built-in CLI and also actually use uh, the same CLI to interact with different team members. So I have here different team members here. I can actually go ahead and interact with those teams as well. So there you go, you have complete information from code 42, including the all the details uh, actually mentioned right here. Now, coming going back to the uh, actual use case, demo use case for today, which is John, the departing employee, uh, as Nathan uh, demoed, has actually tried to access a very sensitive confidential file, and um, most likely uh, has also actually downloaded it. And let's see what actually uh, uh, to do from here and how Cortex XOR actually helps you automate the end to end response process. So as you see here, uh, we have uh, got several alerts uh, ingested automatically from Code 42 into XO. And what you see here is really the incident uh, panel, which is a uh, number of alerts. And you see all the different alert fields, including the incident ID, name, type. And type signifies the source of the alert generation, the severity level, as well as the playbook associated with it. And you have an SLA, which is actually kicks in right from the time this alert actually gets ingested. And you have several other fields that if you want to choose to do so, you can actually add right here. And uh, for the purp purpose of demo, I won't go get into that, but let's go ahead and get started with investigating this. So clicking on this uh, opens up this uh, window, which is actually the summary page. So in the summary, uh, you have all the basic information, like this is an alert coming from port 42, it's a high severity alert, um, which is a source brand, and it's an actual, actually active status. And it's already in the investigation phase. And as an admin, I can actually go ahead and assign a role for this specific investigation. But uh, I wouldn't do so because it's already in, uh, in, in the works. So you have the complete timeline information captured, the SLA information captured. And uh, there you go. You also have the device host name, the device username, file owner, uh, and the device IP, U, U, UID, as well as the category of the file that got actually downloaded, as well as the category of the user. In this case, it is the departing employee. So, and most of the other information is also fetched, but uh, may not be required for investigation, which jumps into the category of the labels field. But let's straightly go and uh, look at the work plan. So work plan is a space where the playbook 
uh, which is the, uh, the organization's incident response procedures has actually executed automatically. And let's go over and take a look at what has actually happened. So as soon as this actually alert has triggered, the playbook has run and actually has finished um, the job itself. So because it runs at machine speed, as I mentioned before. So the playbook has assigned an incident owner uh, right from the get go. And there is a remediation timer, which is tied to the SLA has actually kicked in. And it has retrieved all the alert details right here. So you can actually click on the task and view the details. It has actually gone to the active directory to get uh, go get the user's manager uh, details as well. So because you have the user information and you uh, Cortex XOR also has this integration with active directory, you get complete active directory information for the user. But in this playbook, we are actually getting the manager's information automatically. And we are also actually adding a different workflow because you can actually have n number of workflows into uh, executing parallelly. So one of the workflows here is just to do a quick check whether the employee was part of an executive team. And in this case, the answer is yes. So uh, Cortex XOR has this unique capability uh, to actually create child uh, investigation as well. Uh, and generally this is done if you want to actually uh, reduce or narrow down the scope of this investigation because of this uh, business critical uh, employee who is part of the exec team. So what happens is you have this child investigation automatically triggered. So child investigation will have its own playbook. You'd want to actually have deep dive investigation, similar playbooks, but much more uh, uh, task very specific to the employee uh, history and so on and so forth. So that's actually done as well here. And all this information is captured in the war room. We'll see it in a minute. Uh, but uh, with this on the left hand side, as you can see, we have retrieved the alert details, got the accurate information of the manager. And if the malicious behavior is determined, we are also going ahead and checking if the manager's email exists. And if the manager is actively employed, we actually go ahead and send an email to the manager successfully saying that here is a suspicious activity uh, which has been uh, found by this specific employee who is reporting to you. So we also have uh, Cortex XDR uh, doing its job here, uh, which has a very powerful integration with Cortex XOR. So Cortex XDR, we are actually using it to locate the endpoint. So you're actually going in and getting all the endpoint information. In this case, you have the endpoint ID type, uh, all the other details such as whether it was actually isolated, but the agent is not yet isolated. So we are using the Cortex XDR's network contain capability to automatically isolate this uh, endpoint immediately. So we are doing two tasks. We are sending an email to the manager, but we are also uh, doing isolation, isolating the endpoint. And also we are training sort of child investigations uh, to reduce the scope of the overall uh, investigation to very few specific members of the soft team. And finally, if the once the remediation uh, process has been completed, uh, we are actually doing uh, stopping the remediation timer so that it, it actually detects and captures the exact time taken to remediate. We are going ahead and using the API to actually integration to actually go ahead and close this uh, status in code 42 for this alert as it is all. Uh, Cortex XOR is also generating an investigation summary report that you could actually go ahead and download uh, automatically, but also all the stakeholders, for instance, uh, ethics team, or legal team, can actually be sent uh, an email uh, right from this playbook along with the report, uh, uh, as well as all the details. And you know, it's actually closing this investigation for you automatically as well. So all this uh, uh, action uh, is actually happening in customer place, but unfortunately it takes a lot of time. And the second challenge is it's actually is not scalable. What if there are five more employees like John uh, actually trying to you know, get to the suspicious uh, uh, high business critical information in a suspicious way, downloading it and actually trying to uh, misuse the information. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the incident information page. So the incident information page is the core case management capability that I was actually mentioning about. Uh, all this layouts is fully uh, customizable. It's driven by uh, the power of the widgets, which is again very modular in nature. And you can actually customize based on preferences. But as you see, it has actually captured all the information. So uh, apart from the case details, it's actually captured me the investigation data as well as the file events. So I can actually go ahead and see the file name, which were, which were kind of exfiltrated, the file path. And it's a document. Uh, uh, it's a business proposal probably, and it's file sizes this. 
and we also have a file category which is uh, a document and the file sync destination tells me that uh, john actually tried to upload this into his dropbox and i have the file hash with me to get more details around it and you have the child in incidents right here uh, which is actually give me more information on uh, what other investigations have actually occurred uh, and you can always go here and click on each investigation to get to the details of it but uh, you pretty much have all the information you have the endpoint isolated you have sent an email to the manager you have the users all the details captured and you also sent an email to alert the different uh, teams uh, war room uh, is a uh, functionality that i was mentioning about where you can actually auto document all the response procedures so all the response procedures are auto documented here uh, each of these artifacts can actually go ahead uh, you can actually go and you know perform certain actions such as you can mark it as evidence note you can view it uh, tag it perform a quick search and filter operation and you can also use the built-in CLI, as I mentioned, for an ad hoc uh, command line operation or interacting with different team members. So the next uh, section, which is basically the related incidents uh, section, which is right here, uh, actually tells me what are the other incidents that could have been related to this uh, before and after a specific number of days. So here I have 30 days uh, by default, but if I go ahead and click on this, uh, incident. So each of this is an actual an incident. So you have two different alerts coming in from Code 42, and you have actually, based on the similar IOCs indicators, uh, you can actually go ahead and mark this as either link uh, or duplicate. And similarly, you have a canvas section, which is again very powerful. And this uh, generally is very helpful uh, during the uh, inside of threat investigation, especially if there is an actual uh, exploit kind of found. But even otherwise, it's a good visual correlation. Uh, to know the relationship between different alerts or events that have been fetched from Code 42 and the other artifacts, be it file hash, email, or domain, or PC information, stuff like that. So this really helps the investigation team, and you can actually go ahead and send a snapshot of this um, into the war room and uh, help them. And the others in the team who are into the war room actually know about it as well. So as you saw, uh, this uh, whole end-to-end -end process, which probably would have taken you know a few days uh, because of different teams involved or a few hours it's actually reduced to machine speed and the same playbook can actually work on uh, you know tens of uh, alerts coming in at the same time so speed and scale is of real value uh, prop here and it really reduces the human error in between follows the standard operating procedures of the organizations and everything is happening within SLA and uh, all the stakeholders are actually notified and I forgot to mention about the mobile app uh, that Cortex XOR has. So even if there are teams who are actually remote, uh, as Nathan mentioned, we are all working remotely. So mobile app really becomes extremely crucial. So the same alert actually alerts the different stakeholders using the mobile app. And um, the response procedures can be actually triggered uh, right away.